welcome. Take it up with Jessica Lee. I'm here with Tom Greenwood, who's the Senior Director of Global Sales Enablement at Dell Tech. Hi, Tom. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Jessica. Great to be here. I know that Dell Tech provides a project management software for the construction companies, for example, a lot of project-based services. And wanted to invite you on to talk about that market, the trends, the innovation, and also your thoughts on best practices in sales enablement. Okay, well, we are the uh, leader in project-based ERP solutions, that's enterprise resource management, and it cuts across construction, architectural, engineering, agency, and our largest population of customers, which are government contractors. And in that space, you are uh, targeting uh, a lot of the uh, project managers, uh, and you have about 400 reps that you're trying to train and and help them to be effective in their sales, enterprise sales, for example. I wanted to get your thoughts on uh, what, what are some of the best practices that, uh, that you're leveraging and what impact are you seeing? Well, Jessica, the one thing we're trying to do, and this cuts across no matter what sales force you have working for you, is you want them to be more productive. And to be more productive, they need to be more efficient. Translation, they need to spend more time with customers. So the best practices are to make sure that they have the technology and tools that they can engage better with customers. And that holds true now for what the country's going through, the world's going through with this virus. Uh, they have to do most of their work, if not all of it, online. So they need to have uh, you know, good equipment, good tools that they can engage with, that they can create uh, you know, email templates that they can use over and over again rather than having to reinvent it. They have to use certain social media platforms so that they can do better research. They have to have uh, access to a lot more information because these customers, you know, want to feel like they have been, uh, you know, touched by someone who has really researched them and know what they do. So that's uh, one thing, have a good technology stack, as we call it. The second thing is they need really good sales skills. In other words, how do you engage with a client the first time you start talking to them? and what would make these clients or prospects even wanna to talk to you. Mm -hmm. So they have to be really good at that. They also have to know the industry, they have to demonstrate that to the customer. And another thing they need to do is they need to be good communicators. A lot of times, it's not what you're telling them, it's how you're telling them. And we're kind of in an age right now where those good communication techniques, whether you're presenting on the phone, whether you're standing and delivering in a conference room, whether you're writing an email or a text, you, know, you, you don't want to be sloppy about it. You want to make sure that you stand out and it comes across as being quite professional, well thought out so that your message can hit home with that client or prospect. I am curious now that the coronavirus is making people to stay at home uh, and I know your company is headquartered in Virginia. I just saw the news that everybody needs to stay at home uh, and I suspect that, that the whole country will have to be staying at home. Uh, how do these construction companies still carry on working if that's the case? Well, they, they are. In fact, I have a friend who won a bid and they actually use our software. They're uh, relining the Holland Tunnel in New York City. Uh, a lot of these construction services are absolutely critical to the infrastructure of mm -hmm. the country. It doesn't mean that they're all working, but if it's considered, you know, really mission critical for them, the country or they've you know gotten a job you know doing something for the government I think what you'll probably see a little bit of more slowdown and you know uh, retail construction and housing construction but construction still goes on because of some of the necessity of it I see okay it's considered essential services all right um, so I also would like to get your thoughts on uh, the challenges that you face in sales enablement uh, given that your industry is still running and it's not like stay at home for everyone. Um, what are the challenges that you face in doing the sales amendment for your team of 400 folks? Well, the good news is, is that we are global and we have invested in delivering uh, virtual live and, and virtual online training, you know, quite a bit. We still have done in the past, you know, stand to deliver. I'm a professional instructor, so I do it all the time. And I really enjoy it. It's a little more challenging uh, doing it virtual live because you're not really sure a lot of time if your audience is listening. 
Uh, salespeople have a tendency to want to multitask, particularly <laughs> if it gets a little boring. Uh, but we have ways to do knowledge checks and, and learning checks. So we've been able to quickly transition to do more of that, you know, in these times we're in with the, the, the virus. So um, it isn't anything new. It's just that something we're doing more of. Um, and what we do is we make sure we provide more reinforcement, particularly in giving, you know, online tests and quizzes just to see if they've absorbed the material. Mm hmm. How about coaching? How do you view coaching? I know you've got the managers and the managers are responsible for their teams. Right. And a lot of that coaching uh, of, I'd say the tribal knowledge has to somehow be shared uh, and capture as best practices. Yeah, that's true. So if you're a sales manager or really any manager, the most important thing you can do for your people is to coach them. Uh, studies have shown that those teams that are coached, 75% of the manager's time are the ones that perform better. It helps get rid of such problems as getting, you know, 80% of your sales from 20% of your people. So you're giving a balanced, you know, coaching scorecard. So what we try to do is we are constantly reinforcing coaching, the need for coaching. And coaching covers a lot of different areas. It's what's called curbside coaching, meaning a sales manager may listen in on a call with a client that one of their salespeople is doing. It could be um, motivational coaching. Everyone needs to be motivated. Uh, it could be very structured coaching, meaning if you have a low will, meaning they don't really have the desire to do the job, a low skill, meaning they don't have the skill to do it, then it requires some much more hands-on coaching. We even need that for our high will, high skill players who um, do extremely well, but everyone likes to be paid attention to and everyone you know, should be coached. So there are coaching methods that we provide. We've done it you know, face-to-face, -face, now we're doing it you know, virtually because it is the most important thing. And, and let's face it, the best coach teams always win. I want to ask about how you are incentivized as a sales enablement team to help sales revenue, because ultimately you're measure on the ROI of the investment you're putting in for sales enablement. Uh, that's true. Now, this is an interesting topic because a lot of sales enablement professionals do not report through the sales organization. Some uh, report through, you know, HR or marketing. I happen to report through the sales organization. So uh, I have, you know, two measurements. One is company performance. I have some control over that, but not as much. That's how we're doing across the board. But I am directly incentivized by the sales team doing well. And we have done some things such as build a sales enablement dashboard where we can take data from our CRM system and and calculate and coordinate it with the uh, our learning management system and we can spot uh, trends to see if we are affecting such things as win rates close rate pipeline size and we use that as proof to show that we are either impacting the sales organization or maybe not impacting the sales organization and that's what is used to go into my compensation and my team's compensation plan for incentive excellent I think that is a trend that uh, I'm seeing is that sales and element executives are trying to align with sales revenue and incentives. Because um, this way you, you have a you know, skin in the game, <laughs> making sure it's very effective. Absolutely. It's, it's the holy grail to figure out what it is that we provide in training and tools. Is it moving the sales needle? That's always been the, the question. You know, you can't go to the CEO and say, uh, say hey look we had a great quarter because our survey monkey shows that uh, we got you know 4.95 on our last training courses that's not good enough you know he's, he or she is going to want to know all right what you delivered what we invested in is it really having an impact on sales and that's what we're doing now wonderful well one of the challenges that i feel now is that we cannot gather in small groups anymore uh, you know, no more uh, on, because I think typically the sales enablement program is both on-site small group training, uh, and now we're just basically having to do it virtually pretty much. Has that been a, a blessing now that we've been forced to go online, or do you think that's going to hamper the effectiveness of sales enablement? Well, I think it could be generational. 
Uh, for example, a lot of our Generation Zs and Millennials, they're used to doing everything online. They're used to uh, taking a look at YouTube. We've taken a lot of what we've uh, created and put it out in, in YouTube clips with some you know, testing and quizzes with it. So they're very used to that type of training. If you get into, you know, more of the, uh, you know, older generations, then they really like, uh, you know, face to face. Uh, it, it's amazing. I get questioned all the time. Hey, I know you, Sales Enable is coming out with some new training. What building is it going to be in? Um, you know, all those type of things that go into, you know, live training. They're just used to being trained like that. So, uh, we are getting, uh, you know, good responsiveness and good feedback on delivering training in, in really two forms now, particularly with the virus going on. One is live virtual where, you know, I can stand and deliver via webcam and, and you know, other cap technical capabilities, or I can, uh, you know, produce a module and some of the rapid learning tools that are available out there and send it to them an email. We can track whether they opened it, how long they looked at it. We can make it mandatory. So we're really not losing anything. Personally, I love to be in front of an audience. I, I love to, to teach. It's one of the reasons I got into enablement. But, you know, you have to adapt with the times. And these times are pretty difficult and strange right now. <laughs> if it is just as effective to do it remotely, because we're forced to now look for creative ways to do it virtually, it does save money if everybody can just do it virtually instead of being together. Um, it's less time consuming, not having to fly. So do you actually think that this situation is then gonna have a permanent impact as far as how much is invested for online training versus on-site training? I think it absolutely is. Uh, first of all, you know, although we are doing well as a company, we could be doing better if this virus didn't exist. So what does that mean? Well, we, you know, have uh, had to cut back on expenses. No one's traveling anywhere. I actually didn't relish, uh, you know, this next month hopping in that coach seat and flying to, uh, to Sydney <laughs> for hours on end. And it will dramatically impact because we're going to have to recover from a revenue perspective because our business will, will, will drop down somewhat. And one way to do that to have it go right to the bottom line is to make sure we're not spending too much and travel costs a lot of money. So you're absolutely correct. Well, this has been a really informative and educational discussion with you on sales enablement and how things are shifting because of this virus. I appreciate you sharing your best practices with us, Tom. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. We'd love to do it again. You pick the topic and I'll be there for you. There you have it, folks. Take it up with Jessica Lee, Tom Greenwood from Dell Tech.